Hello guys, today we're going to see PID controllers, which are the most popular controllers in, in industry. Okay. They are widely used in industrial processes because uh, we do not need the dynamical model of the system. Uh, it means that it's, uh, it's only uh, needed to have uh, um, the step response of the system and uh, uh, once we have this step response we can find um, different uh, by different way ways of tuning we can find the parameters of the of, of the PID another reason is that they are robust uh, meaning that um, it's possible for us to have not ex not an exact uh, values for all the parameters in order to reach this uh, a certain desired behavior um, uh, one warning, one important warning is that we have to adjust parameters in order to avoid instability. This is very important because uh, it's very easy for some um, some uh, typical uh, typical processes to show uh, instabilities um, for certain parameters of a PID. Now let us go for the for the PID structure. PID stands for proportional, integral, and derivative, and those are actions which we are going to take upon the error. This error is the input to the PID, and it is found to be the reference minus the output. In such a way that the output of the controller, which is going to be the input to the plant. Uh, is going to have these three parts and those are going to be uh, to be added the first part is the proportional part and if you can see it's the proportion of the of the error that we have it's the kp times the error then we're going to integrate the error and multiply it times some gain uh, ki which is the, the integral gain and finally we're going to add the a proportion of a derivative of the error. Uh, another way to express uh, this uh, this PID um, output is using the traditional form, and this traditional form is a little bit different because of uh, of the available devices back in the 60s and 70s. Um, uh, because at that time we hadn't um, uh, operational amplifiers. Now, first of all, we may have a, a what we call the heuristic tuning, and for this heuristic tuning, we are going to uh, to propose parameters of the of the system, okay, of, of the of the controller. So PID parameters can be tuned. Uh, following some intuitive steps. First of all, let us course tune KP. I mean, the, the order is important. Then tune uh, integral gain, and finally we go for derivative gain. Once we have the, those, then we fine tune all parameters, and always, always observe stability of the response. So for this, um, let us uh, let us do some some uh, example using Mathematica. First instruction is uh, just declare the the process the, the transfer function of the process. For this time, we are considering some uh, um, underdamped second order linear system, which uh, uh, typically. Um, um, transfer function is given by this expression then we declare the um, transfer function of the PID and for this case we have uh, KD times S squared plus KP times S plus KI over S if you can see we have a couple of zeros and just one pole at the origin which of course is due to the integral uh, action that we are that we are considering uh, then uh, we just simplify a little bit the closed loop expression given by GP times GC over 1 plus GC uh, times GP in such a way that the closed loop transfer function GCL 
is uh, declared as a transfer function model, which, which is again a built in destruction for Mathematica. Uh, and we just uh, declared this as, as a transfer function model. And between brackets, we have this percentage sign, which means that we are going to take the immediately above result. And uh, we're we are taking S as our Laplace transform. Then uh, we find the output response, which is uh, considering this transfer function model, G closed loop, GCL. And uh, the one here, number one, means that it is the, the input. This it's it's a step, a unit step input. And uh, we are uh, we want to obtain this with respect to time. And just in order to have some sliders, uh, in order to to uh, in order to to allow us to change parameters in uh, an easier way, I'm going to use manipulate instruction, and I'm going to plot the step response from uh, zero to twenty in time, and I ask uh, Mathematica to plot range all. And uh, finally, we're going to uh, the, the 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 range of the sliders for KP, KI, and KD. I'm going to put it from zero to ten, from zero point one to ten, and from zero point one to point five uh, for this for this case. Once uh, you have um, you have uh, written all this in Mathematica, you're going to have this block. So as you can see we have this slider for KP, another slider for KI, and another one for KD. You, um, you're going to be able to, to change these sliders in order to change uh, each one of the parameters that we have. Now let us consider another way to tune a PID. Besides the heuristic method that we have seen before, there are at least two um, other ways to tune a PID. Remember that tuning is uh, the action of adjust all the all the parameters, uh, in this case KP, TI, and TD, in order to satisfy um, design specifications. Uh, these specifications are three, particularly. The first one is that the response should be fast. Also, uh, it uh, do not has to have any oscillations. And finally, um, you have to reach the the reference, meaning that the steady state error should be zero. So the first method, uh, or the first uh, group of methods, are called the classical methods, which are due to Ziegler Nichols. There are another uh, tuning methods, uh, like for example, calling Kuhn, uh, but we're not going to see this today. And uh, another methods involving adaptive control, for example, of fuzzy logic. And uh, they are used seen, uh, since the 50s, and uh, they are empirical adjustments of, of parameters. We're going to see uh, two of them. Uh, the first one is called reaction curve. And second one is called sustained oscillations method. Those are the classical method. Uh, but also, if uh, the the dynamics of the system is available, for example, its transfer function, then it's possible to apply some uh, some methods uh, based on the model. I mean, use the, the use this uh, transfer function of the plant in order to determine uh, these parameters. Of course, satisfying some design specifications. So. Let us now consider the reaction curve method. First, uh, we have to apply a step input, a unit step input to the open loop system. Once uh, we have the this step response, next th thing to do is to find uh, the, the equation of a, a, a straight line uh, which passes through the, in the first inflection point of the, of the response. That is here. Uh, th this is straight line in a, in a, in orange color. 
um, and then consider the, the steady state response, which for this example is set on uh, 25. Uh, then what we need to do is, uh, if we make a sum uh, to, the, to the figure which is uh, to the left, then we're going to find two points. The first point is where this straight line uh, passes through the uh, the zero axis here or the uh, the zero value axis, and the other point is where this uh, straight line crosses the the final YSS point. So we make a division here, and uh, the the this first parameter is called L, and the other parameter is is T. Both are times, if you can see. And uh, these times are going to be used in order to, um, to to obtain these parameters, as we are going to see now. Once we have um, values of t and l, which again they those are time values, then parameters for a PID are computed using the, the following table. So, for example, for example, if we uh, want to uh, adjust parameters of a PID, then we know that KP is going to be 1.2 times T over L, TI is going to be 2 over L, and TD is going to be 0.5 over L. The other method by Sigler Nichols is called sustained oscillations, and here what we're going to do is to apply some proportional controller to uh, a closed loop, uh, and, and we are going to set it into a closed loop system considering the process. Next thing you want to do is to increase the gain of the proportional controller until the system uh, becomes critically stable. That is, uh, we're going to have sustained oscillations. And with this, uh, at this value, we take note of the gain, which is going to be called KU and uh, the oscillations uh, period, which is going to be TU. Then parameters are found uh, as, in the, as in the table. So uh, for example, having these values KU and TU, uh, PID uh, parameters are going to be like this, KP plus 2.6 KU, TI 0.5 TU, and TD is uh, 0.12 uh, TU. Let us do an example. Imagine that you have this system here. Uh, it's a third order system. And um, let us apply now the sustained oscillations method. We may obtain here the step response, just in order to see how, how the system is, is, is responding. And uh, for this example, I'm going to use the, the root locus of the system. So as you can see, root locus um, tells us that that for for this gain 4.6, we have that the poles are on the imaginary axis, meaning that the system is marginally stable, or we have sustained oscillations. If we plot the time uh, the time response for this value of, of uh, KP of the for the value for the, for the proportional controller. Uh, we have that the oscillating period is 2.2 is, uh, seconds. So now we have value for KU and TU. And if we apply the rules in the table, then we find that uh, KP equals to 2.8, TI equals to 1.1, and TD equals to 0.3. If we plot the step response of the control system, we're going to see that this is the response. So take a look. Uh, uh, it's very easy to see that uh, we are not achieving the, the the goals that we had. Remember that we need a fast response, we need no oscillations, and we need steady state theory equals to zero. So we have steady state theory equals, equals to zero, but uh, we have oscillations, uh, and, and we have also a, a huge overshoot here. Um, so uh, at this point, what you need to do is to apply some 
fine tuning technique as in our heuristic method. So guys, uh, thank you for seeing this. If you have any comments, please leave it uh, right below here. Bye.